say. Okay, so now fruits and sorts. So I'm going to just go into my fruits and sorts and I can um, preview them in icon view again like this and change the size and make decisions like that or we could use bridge too so I can go into fruits and sorts and I can just double click on the ones I want so let's say I want to use the banana so I double click that and it opens into Photoshop very nice and then I want the let's say I want the olives for the eyes and I want what else I want uh, I'm going back to bridge um, I want a body of some sort let's see what's a good one for the body Thank you, red pepper. I like that participation. And what about for the head? Melon. Melon, that's a good one for the head. Melon for the head. And, okay, so we got, what do we got here? We've got um, the mouth. We got eyes, we've got um, body, we've got head, the head. Um, we need a nose. I like using for the nose. I like the strawberries because it gives it a little mustache too. So strawberries. Um, I wonder if you can do more than one in bridge. Bridge is kind of new to me. Uh, but I wonder if I command click both of these does it let me open them both together let's see so I got a hat double click no it it didn't give me the hat did it oh it did give me the hat oh good so I I command clicked multiple items and then I just double clicked on one of them and then opened up both so, okay, so well, let's start putting this. Oh, maybe we want some feet. I like her feet. I like this little zucchini here. And you can, you know, use whatever you want, but you'll get the idea with this much here. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with the, the head. So the melon here. Okay, so... Um, with with something like this like a melon you can you can select the background because the background is more a similar color and then inverse select so you might uh, well there are a few ways so there's quick select tool also let's see quick select tool has a really cool feature with the quick select tool you paint in an area and it's a smart tool so uh, Photoshop detects the colors in your image and the contrast and figures out what you actually want to select and figures out the edges. These days I think the tool is so smart with a new feature called um, Select Subject that you can select the, on the Quick Select tool. You can also check Enhance Edge. That's like anti-alias to make the pixel smooth on the edge. And then let's see what happens if I click Select Subject. It's, it should be so smart that it would realize that my subject is the melon. Select subject, let's see. Yep, that's how, that's how easy it is. It just selected for me what it guessed I wanted. I can zoom in just to check that the edges, that it got the edges and I could kind of like paint along a little bit to make corrections along the edge if I need to, but it did a pretty darn good job here. But things are not always that easy, so a lot of the time they are, but I'll show you other methods just in case. So then I take my move tool and I can move this to a destination image, but at this point I don't have a destination image. So instead of moving this somewhere else, 
I want to use another method of just separating it from the background, making it into its own layer. And that would be the same as copy and paste um, would work, but why do you copy and paste when there's, if you go to layer, new, um, and it's layer via copy is what is the, is the same as copy and paste all in one which why go why bother doing this when you can just use command J I think command J is my favorite keyboard shortcut in Photoshop it's so great so while I have a selection marching ants around something I can just hold command hit J and now if I turn off the background layer you'll see that it's just just the melon separate from the background so I can do the same thing with the um like the body but the body i guess what i need is to put the body into this image at this point uh, so i'll probably need more space in this image so i need to adjust my canvas size not my image size but my canvas size but i can go to image and then i go to um canvas size not image size because image size is just going to make everything in this image get bigger but I just want more space so I want to go to canvas size and then I want to add more canvas and if you think in inches you can switch to inches and so this is 11 wide by 7 tall I want more height so maybe I want 14 for the height so I just change it to 14 and if I want more height below rather than up and rather than on top and on bottom then I can click the the anchor to be on top so it'll add more below and it's gonna use this color that's selected there or I could choose just like the background color or the foreground color whatever color I want to fill that area and I can or I could just do let's see is there transparency as an option no not transparency so I'll just say okay so it 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 added more space and it filled the background with that blue color um, but I can turn off the background and it's just transparency there with my melon so I'm gonna go to um, the body the red pepper and so with the red pepper I could do that same trick but I just feel guilty just select subject every time but that's you can totally do that because that's what the it's designed for um, you could also try selecting on an image that has a background that's more similar in color you could use another tool that's hiding behind the quick select which is magic wand tool to select the background so if I use my magic wand tool um, magic wand tool you would set the tolerance which there it's detailed here in the handout about the magic wand tool so let's move up to let's go in order here so lasso tool magic wand tool so magic wand tool has settings like the tolerance goes from 0 to 255 um, it determines the um, the similarity or difference of pixels selected enter a value in pixels um, that is low and you will be selecting fewer colors at a time and if you select a higher value you select a broader range so it's set to um, a probably standard setting of 32 so when you use the magic wand you just click an area and right now what are my settings here anti-alias is checked contiguous is not checked so with contiguous not checked it means that it will the selection will jump across boundaries of color more easily I believe let me click outside to deselect I check contiguous and then I click 
See how the selection stays on one side of the red pepper rather than jumping across? Because it's a smart tool, so it, it analyzes the image and it sees, oh, this is a very different color. So when, you're, when you have contiguous checked, it, um, the selection will stay kind of together on one side of a boundary of something that's very different in color. You can add to the selection by holding shift and clicking to just keep adding, adding, click, click. Click. So now I've selected the entire background, but my goal is to really select the red pepper, not the background. So I can always inverse select. If you go to select, there's inverse. Shift Command I on a Mac, Shift Control I on Windows will switch from selecting the background to selecting what is was not selected. So the red pepper is now selected, and then I can take my move tool and I can drag my red pepper to my melon layer and drop red pepper in there and then maybe I want to put the melon above so I'm dragging the melon trying to drag the melon above there it is above the body zooming out to see that and I can select them both together with my move tool by dragging around both of them and now both layers are selected and I can move them around together probably need a little more space for this but it's okay because I'm gonna end up moving this all out into a new environment anyway but well I'll just give it a little more space just so I have more room to work with so I'm just gonna go back to inches and then I'll say how about 17 inches tall and it's gonna put space on the top and bottom Okay, there we go, got space. And now I need the banana. So on the banana, I'm gonna use another tool that you'll see under, in the lasso tool category. I'm gonna use the magnetic lasso tool. So that's a, another smart tool. So with the, the magnetic lasso tool can be found when you click and hold on the lasso tool it's in the bottom of the set of lasso tools there. There it is. Select that. And then let's check our options. You have the option to feather, anti-alias. I've got that checked. And then we've got an option called width and an option called contrast and frequency. Let's see what what is what is all that. So width, it's information about what these all are. So the width is uh, like the magnetic field you can adjust. Um, the minimum distance at the pointer that uh, that so, sorry the minimum distance that the pointer can be placed from the object's edge before the edge can be detected um, and then contrast a higher when you set contrast is kind of like setting tolerance in on the um, magic wand but it works kind of in reverse. So a higher value detects only edges that um, that contrast sharply with their surroundings, and a lower value detects detects lower contrast edges. So in this in this particular image, it's pretty high contrast. So so I might want to put a high a higher contrast value to detect the edges more easily. So maybe I want instead of 15, maybe I want 30. Let's see how that works. And then to start with your magnetic lasso tool, you start with a click on the edge and then you just kind of hover over, hover along the edge and um my width is set to 19. I, if I press caps lock, then it'll change my tool to be, it should anyway, let's see, caps lock, is caps lock not working right now? Hmm. That's weird. When, usually when you press caps lock, it turns the width tool into a, like a round tool area that then you can adjust with your arrow keys but my caps lock is not working right now for some reason okay and then as I'm dragging around um, 
Let me see, does my bracket key... Oh, the bracket keys, though, will change your width, but it's just I can't see the visual of my width changing. Um, but the width amount, remember, it's like changing the magnetic field, so um, a higher value is going to detect the edge when your cursor is closer, or, or, sorry, when you're not... A higher value... On the width, it's going to detect the edge with your cursor being further away. And a, a lower value, you have to get right to the edge more precisely with your cursor. Um, and I'm just dragging around the periphery and um, points are just being planted automatically. But you might have noticed that I got a little off course. You could also press the delete key to go back. I'm just pressing delete, 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 because I got a little off course here. And then you can also, instead of just mousing around, you can um, click to add the points like you do, you would with the pen tool if you want to force points to go somewhere. But if you just move your mouse quickly around the edge, um, the points will just automatically place based on what you have set as your in your frequency field up above in the control panel. I'm going to zoom in with Command Plus and then I might click to force the points to go here and here and then I go to the very first point that I started with and I could double click to finish this or just click on the first point and I'll see a circle just like when using the pen tool. I can just click on the first point made and now I have marching ants. And uh, so, <clears throat> see, there's the frequency number you can play with. It will um, change the number of points, how frequently it automatically places points. And you can also use the this lasso tool as well, to just like the freeform lasso tool works, to make corrections, but it could be a little sticky because it has a mind, the magnetic lasso tool has a mind of its own, so you have to kind of, so if I want to add to the selection, I can, I, I'd have to hold shift to get into add mode, click, 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 and I'm just clicking to force the points to go around this little area here, click, and then I'm just going to click and close, and it adjusts, just like the other lasso, and now, I'm just going to take the Move tool and drag this into my... It's my Melon image. That's my destination image. So you got to keep track of what's your destination image. So i got a big smile there. And then the Olives. I'm going to use the Quick Select tool. So with the Quick Select tool, remember you can draw with that just like a paintbrush. You can change the size of your paintbrush by using your bracket keys that are next to the P key. You can also change the size here with the slice, size slider, but it's easier just to use the bracket keys. And then I'm just going to click, just one click actually found the edges, and I can click over here to add the other olive as well, and then take my move tool and go inside of either one of them drag up to my destination, drop in, and then I'll go with my strawberry here. I think I want that strawberry. I might try another tool here in this set of smart tools here. There's Quick Select Magic One. At the top is a brand new tool called Object Selection Tool. Let's try that one. So that one is set to Object Subtract. Um, that means that it will, if there's like a hole in the, the, you know, like this is a teacup, it will, it will subtract the holes in there. Um, enhance edge, I might want to check that. And then let's see what happens if I use this tool by dragging around what I want my subject to be. I'm just going to click and drag around this strawberry and it figured it out pretty smart. And then I take my um, move tool and drag the strawberry up to the destination image. But before I do that, let me just zoom in just to check that it got the edges. Okay, so if I see that it missed something, I can always take the quick select tool, for example. I'll make my brush really small and just 
add. The quick select tool is always defaulted as soon as you start using it to add to two selections so you don't have to hold down shift so I'm just adding. If I go let's say I go out too far no problem I can hold option and then subtract by just draw holding option and drawing over that edge or adding drawing in more and then uh, if I want to get really detailed I can zoom way in I use command plus make my tool really small this is the quick select tool and just draw in little areas and of course if the quick select tool is not quite getting it you can go into quick mask let me just change this to be the standard red well no I'll make it green because strawberry and then go to quick mask mode and then I can use my eraser or well let me go with paint and hard brush and then um, if I paint with white what's gonna happen I'm adding to the sol to the selection area paint with black I'm subtracting so I can make fine-tune adjustments also going into mask mode and then I go back out to standard click the button now I'm back to standard and I have adjusted the shaping of my selection edge okay so now well there's a little bit here I could fix here maybe I'll fix that with quick mask then I'll so I'll do that by painting with white to add a little bit to this area there there press X to switch back to black and erase okay then go back to normal so I just adjusted the edge there okay that's good then I take my move tool and I drag this strawberry up to my destination dropping it and this creature's getting funny um let's see what else did I need the zucchini uh, the hat so with the hat let's try let's try quick select and select subject on the hat see if it figures it out oh not quite so I take quick select and I, I'm just gonna make it bigger and add to this area that's good and then I just take my move tool drag into my destination so now there's a hat there and zucchini let's try um, the object selection and drag over the zucchini all right looking good and then we take the move tool drag into um, melon there we go and oh the edges are a little messy but we can erase that Okay, then um, I forgot. Let me go to back to bridge because I forgot I want to do something for the arms. So I'll take this squash here. Double click that. And uh, I can try quick select. Go to quick select. Select subject. Does a good job. Let me just zoom in to check the edges. Let's see. Pretty darn good. Just a slight little edge here that I can fill out. Just drawing with my quick select to fill out that edge there. And zooming out. And I'm going to just take my move tool. Drag this into melon. And that can be an arm there. Okay, so now piecing this together. Uh, you might want to turn off the visibility or and label things hat and I just turn off the vis visibility on hat so I can see what's what I've got my move tool on auto select I'm gonna just um, maybe move this out of the way for now I'm gonna hit command T and transform the banana mouth remembering not to hold shift if I want if I don't want to mess up the proportions okay I'll go with that press return to apply that then the 
olives, if I want to change the distance between the eyes, I can separate those onto separate layers. So uh, I'm just going to take my regular lasso and draw a, a circle around one of the olives and I'll hit Command X to cut, Command V to paste. So now they're actually on two separate layers. So that was just a quick um, cut and paste. Edit, cut and paste. And now this eye's there and that eye's there and I can put them together like that. I can select one and hold shift and select the other and now they're both selected together and I can hit command T and scale them down together. Ooh, I forgot to, I was, I don't want to hold shift when I scale. Okay, so I'll go like that and then I'll press return and then move these guys around and then the strawberry can come in. I'll hit command T, scale that down. and scale that down so that it kind of fits and then press return to apply that and then we need the um the zucchini i'm going to hit command t and scale that down to be a foot here and then a foot press return and i could zoom in here on my zucchini foot and use my eraser with a soft brush, I believe it has a soft brush, and it's all, let's see, bring, bring up the opacity, and you can kind of erase an edge on something that isn't too attractive. There, much better. And then I can also use my move tool and duplicate by holding option and, and dragging out. I can also um, hit command T and right click and then choose um, flip horizontal. That's like reflect in Illustrator. And then press return to apply that. Return. So he's got feet. And then the arm. Let's see. I'm gonna hit Command T on the arm. And maybe scale it a little bit. And then um, I can option drag out a duplicate after I press return and apply that transformation and then I can hit command T and rotate you can also let's see, let's see maybe. <laughs> now I now I need more width on this canvas you can also uh, go to to edit and then hover over transform and find flip horizontal or flip vertical here too but I think I'll keep it the way it is let me just press return and I can go to um, image and canvas size and give it a little more width the width I'll do 15 for the width um, on the left side, say okay there. Oh, now he kind of looks like he's um, flipping someone off. <laughs> maybe that's not the way I want him to be. Uh, maybe I want, let me hit Command T and rotate it like, no, well, that's even worse. Let's try, right click and flip horizontal now he just looks like a bodybuilder we'll go with that turn and you could experiment with seeing what these look like behind the body let's see if I select the two together I can write, let's see, I can um, go to layer, arrange, send to back, same keyboard shortcuts as in uh, Illustrator, shift, command, left bracket, or shift, control, left bracket on Windows. So now that's in the back. Okay, so, oh, we need the hat. Turn the hat back on. I'll hit command T on, oops, 
wrong one. Let me just press return. Let me go to hat, select hat, command T, and then scale the hat down. Maybe I need a little bit more room. So I'll go to image, canvas size, give it a little more height so I can see how the hat's going to look. Maybe 20. There we go. Then I can kind of play with the hat. Hit Command T, try rotating it, see how it looks kind of tipped, smaller. The tie would look nice on this too. I just can't resist. Let me just grab that tie. Where's that tie? There it is. So let's see if I use my object selection tool and it's selected to object subtract, it should select the hole in the tie. Oh, almost, not quite. Um, so I will have to make some adjustments here. Maybe, let me try a different one. Let's try quick selection and select subject. Hey, that did better. It just got a little bit of the shadows that I don't want. So I'm going to hold Option and Subtract, or and then Add. There we go. And then I take my Move tool, drag the tie up to the melon, put the tie on there. And the tie needs to go behind the melon. I should be labeling all these tie and the melon, so I could use command left bracket to make it go down the stack till it gets under the melon, perfect. So now what you could do so that all these stay together is you can select all the layers except for the background. Click on one, shift click the top, and you could go, so I clicked on the bottom and I shift clicked the top layer all high all these layers are highlighted and now they can all move together so I don't have to link them but just to be sure you can always click the fly out menu on the layers panel and choose link layers now all these layers are linked and later if you want to unlink them you can click that button again on the layer top right of the layers panel and you can unlink the layers that are selected Okay, then finally we need to go get a background. So we go to uh, Google or whatever, you can use the Flickr or whatever you, wherever you like to search for images. I'm just gonna go to Google Ima and images and find, he looks like he's ready for the office, um, but maybe I just wanna put him on the beach for fun. Beach, so I look up beach and uh, find a beach scene for him to be on. This one might be good. Um, so I click on that and um, it's not big enough though. I see now the dimensions. So if I want something larger, then, um, and when you're searching for images for uh, collecting for your, for your project assignment, you, probably want the image to be much higher resolution than something like 960 by 640 like this one. Something that's over a thousand pixels for the height and the width at least. So you could go to tools and you could go to size and choose large to make sure you're choosing large images. And then try Maybe this one. So I click here. And this is bigger. And then see if I can get it. I can right click it and choose open image and new tab. And then let's see if I get it. There it is. Then I can right click and choose save image as. And I'll call and I can rename it or just leave it that name. I'm gonna go into my media drive, into my folder for this class um, and I'll just have it go there. Well, I have an images folder. I'll put it there and save. And then back into Photoshop and I'll open that image file, open or command O, find that beach in my images folder and 
there's the beach open to JPEG. And then I go to my melon. And at any time, if you're in the middle of working and you want to just save your work, um, you can go file save and then save it as a Photoshop file as whatever it is called. It doesn't matter at that point, but I'm not going to save it like that. I'm going to just drag it to my beach. So I'm going to go to, so I got my beach open. I can close a bunch of these if they're kind of in the way. Squash, close squash, close strawberries. Save changes to strawberries. I don't need to save that. There's my beach. There's the guy on melon. I'm going to drag the guy up to the beach. Drop him in. So he's a good size for this beach. But you could scale the, um, the character smaller or bigger for this assignment. It, for your project, you don't want to have to scale something bigger that you drop into a destination image. We'll talk more about that later. But I could hit Command T and scale him maybe a little smaller to fit the scene. Better maybe. I might also, I'm going to press return, I might also use crop and take it off of the constrained and go to ratio and then crop it so that my main character will be under the intersecting lines because right now he's not, whoops, got to adjust this crop out here and here. Right now it's, now he's under at least one intersecting line. So that's better. So that's a better framing then. And then I can uh, click the check or press return to apply that. And then there is a shadow. So if I want him to be, if I want a shadow for the guy, um, I can duplicate all of his layers by, while they're all selected, I can, um, I can click the, or I can drag, or no, here, I'll have them all selected. All these layers are selected. And then I'll just go to duplicate layers and it'll just be in this document. Okay, so now I've got the layers duplicated and then, and then I want to, and then see when I drag, this is the duplicate. Then I wanna just merge these layers that are duplicated, merge layers and um, and then I'll just rename this shadow and, um, actually, actually, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rename it shadow. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, just load the selection around it. So a quick way to do that is to, um, command click. And then, uh, then I can use paint bucket to, to, but see, I think I'm not going to put, put the paint bucket on this layer because if I take the paint bucket to this layer, because there are so many colors, the paint bucket's just going to go in little, little sections at a time. So, um, unless I make the tolerance all the way up to 255. Let's try that. 255 and click. Yeah, that worked. I brought the tolerance on paint bucket all the way up to 255. And then I could just, yeah, then I was going to just go to a blank layer and use that and not use, not call this shadow and de delete it in the end. But since I increased the tolerance, it worked. But I want the paint color to be something different. So I'm going to take my eyedropper and find a color in the sand and then take my paint bucket and click there we go and then now I'm gonna just deselect command D to deselect and use my move tool and move this around the shadow I'm gonna send it back underneath the guy or I can select yeah well I'll do that shadow command shift left bracket there we go. Then he went all the way to the bottom, not under the background. That was nice. And then I want this to be my shadow. 
So I can use, I can go to edit, transform, and then I can use distort and drag from the top down and create a shadow here that kind of matches the palm tree shadow on the sand. And press return to apply that. And I can bring down the opacity a little bit and uh, play with, uh, there's a blend, blending mode options here that you can play with so that it will blend in with the textures on the sand, like linear burns kind of nice. So you can see the texture through. So that's a way to finalize this work. And then you go um, file, save as, or save, and save to my computer. And I want to put this, and, and you want to name it, your last name, followed by your first initial dash EX5. And if you want to do both for extra credit, I'm going to just say this 5B because this is the second one I did. And save it as a Photoshop file. But then if you want to do the extra credit, change the format to PDF. So you go file and then I'll do save as and change the format to Photoshop PDF, save, okay, and I'm going to just make it be, it's on high quality print, um, that's fine, I'll just leave it at that, save PDF, and then, uh, then my other one was, let's see if I can bring it up, open recent, this one here, the face, you need to also go file, save as, save on my computer, and this is going to be saved as a Photoshop PDF as well, save, okay, Yeah. All right. So then I need to to turn it in for extra credit. I go to Acrobat and I go to File and I hover over Create and then Combine Files into a single PDF and I can click Add Files and I can choose my um, and go back to Column View Columns and go to my folder for the class and I have my PDFs for the exercise 5 PDFs. I'm just going to command click both of them so I select them both together and I'm going to just leave the settings as is and click combine. So then I'll say, then I'll say start on that. That's fine. It's binder 1 now so it's not actually saved as anything until I go file save. And I'll just have it go to this folder here. That's my folder for the class. And then this one, you can just name it last name, first initial dash <coughs> EX5 and turn it in as a PDF. And you don't need to turn in the individual Photoshop documents for this one. Oops, I need to name this something different. So I'll just say combined. Um, you know, just to not override my other one, I should have labeled my other uh, exercise 5 PDF something different, like A, save. So now I go to Canvas, go to our course on Canvas, close that, find the assignments page, go to assignment or exercise this is exercise five so we go to exercise five we click what they change it to start assignment not submit that's weird start assignment 
Okay, that's weird. All right, well, that's they changed the terminology. So I guess you click Start Assignment and then File Upload. So you click um, Upload File, Choose File, and then you choose the file that you're turning in, which in this case, it's just my one PDF. Exercise five PDF this this one here that has both images together in one. Oops, it's not letting me yeah, so it has both. So you can see. And then I say open and submit assignment. And that's it. So um, so thanks so much, Morgan. You're a trooper. Thanks for hanging in there till the end.